Welcome to this Facebook live event to chat about help and support around personal finance. Polfed and Payplan have put this on together to assist in managing money. And I just want to say a big thank you uh, for listening in to this today. My name's Hayley Ailey. I'm the wellbeing lead for PFEW. And I'm really grateful to Payplan and to um, uh, Anthony Price, who you see next to me on the screen, hopefully. Anthony is a practicing manager for Payplan. And I believe, Anthony, you've been with the company now for 16 years. I have indeed, yeah, 16 whole years but loved every minute of it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Well, that's what they say, isn't it? Working for a good organisation, you don't this feel like you've, doing a day, you've done a day of extra this work. This is very true. You? This is very true oh, indeed. Brilliant. Never a dull day. <laughs> and the idea of this event this afternoon is to just help anybody out there that's listening around any concerns that they might be having with regards to finance and personal debt. Do you know, this year has been a tough year for absolutely it everybody. Really has. Um, and, and do you know what? If we can help one person reach out and get some support, if uh, their worries about finance uh, and personal debt are starting to affect their well-being and their mental health, then do you know what, Ants? We'll have done a really good job today. We will. So, yeah. Time well spent. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Now, no for the problem. benefit of those that are listening to us, uh, if you've got any questions as we go on, then please feel free. Normal Facebook rules apply. If you want to put something in the comments, then feel free to do so. But be mindful of that. Everybody's going to see that, aren't they? Or if you do want to put a question and you want to put it a little bit more confidentially, then you can private message us on this page. And we've got someone who's uh, ready to feed that through to us if needed. So please feel free to uh, feed in any questions that you might have and we'll try and deal with them at the end. Now, what we've done previously, and I hope you've seen this over um, social media, is we've pre-asked a lot of our membership across the Police Federation any questions or queries that they might have. Our members are telling us that they're really struggling at the moment with all things finance, especially this yeah. time of year. So if we can offer some help and support, Ants, that'll be absolutely brilliant. Great. So Without this sounding a bit like a mastermind, and I'm going to go through question after question, I don't want you to feel like you're on a hot <laughs> spot. <laughs> but what I'll do is Let's I'll do start going through the questions and we can have a chat about any answers. Perfect. Yourself can give. That's brilliant. All right. Thank you. So question number one then. Dun, dun, okay. Dun. <laughs> so who can I talk to about my growing debt? If I reach out for help for my debts, will it remain confidential? Now, that question is vital to us as police officers, as you can imagine. Um, so any help you can give with that will be really greatly received. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess first thing I should do is just um, probably introduce um, our organisation as well. So for anybody that's new to Payplan, we're a national service and we provide free debt advice. We also provide debt solutions to anybody, including, of course, police for the police force who um, is struggling with debt. And what I really, really like about that question is first and foremost, the fact that that person wants to talk because debt can be such a difficult topic to get onto and people find it very hard to open up. The, the fact that somebody wants to do that and wants to reach out is very, very encouraging. Um, and you've just mentioned there about um, impact to mental health and well-being, And that's something that we find um, is, is something that's seriously impacted with debt. Um, just to put that into context, 85% of clients from Payplan um, that we've we spoke to and researched with have said that being in debt has either added to or caused a mental health issue, including stress, depression, anxiety. But the really good thing is that following on from debt advice, 93% of those clients said that getting debt help improved mental health and their stress reduced. And also 95% of them felt more confident to deal with their money matters and management of money. And 69% of them felt that they could open up to other people. And that's a really pressing issue. A lot of people don't speak to anybody. And we find that when they do speak to us, we're often the first person that they've reached out to. So the fact that we can help to unlock that slightly and to help them to reach out to others, then great, because the more that we talk about it, the better. Um, first and foremost, I guess, in terms of the confidentiality, 
absolutely any help that we give somebody is in the strictest of confidence we are a hundred percent confidential service and we have worked with um alongside the police federation now for over 28 years that we've been in operation um in terms of our background we were set up specifically working alongside the police federations offering debt help to those that are in need and um, for people that might be thinking, but how do I get in touch? Do I have to do that via the Federation? You can do that in multiple ways. You can do that either by reaching out through the Federation or just come to us directly. You can get help um, in a way that you feel is, is right for you. Um, some people might be thinking, how do I know that I can trust a service? How do I know that I can feel confident in them? Well, that's really, really key. First and foremost, always get free advice don't pay for advice. Um, the good news is that there aren't huge amounts of companies that do charge for that, but make sure you don't pay for it because mm. nobody should have to pay to get out of debt. But also look for organizations that are supported and recommended. For example, with PayPlan, we're recommended by the Money and Pension Service, but also your banks. Your banks will recommend PayPlan. If you have debts with your banks from credit cards, loans, for example, we're trusted by banks. Banks recommend PayPlan. And that's really important as well. They want you to get debt help. Um, so do that. Um, and another thing I would say is a lot of people do worry about getting debt advice. They, they're mm -hmm. concerned that if they do access that, that will impact them or will affect them in some way. And in particular, their credit file, their credit score. Um, I would always say, never worry about seeking debt advice. As easy as that might sound for me to say it, there is always someone very nice at the end of the phone. You'll speak to someone lovely that will take care of you and will support you. But more than that, um, it will not impact you in any way. Advice is just that, it is getting advice. Whether you then decide to follow up on that advice and take the advice that's given, the recommendation that's given, that is entirely your choice. Mm -hmm. There is no pressure to do that you can make a decision in the time that's right for you. And the final thing I'd say about that is getting advice needs to be in a way that works for you. For a lot of people, in particular those that might be struggling with mental health or other struggles, getting access to help in the way that suits you is paramount. And by that, I mean, if you contact us, for example, you don't just have to do that over the phone. You can contact us through our website. You can email us. We have live chat facility. We have WhatsApp. We even have video chat if you'd like to see the person that you're speaking to. And that really goes a long way because I think the more comfortable you feel about the way that you're accessing the help, the easier that discussion will be and you'll feel more, um, more capable and more comfortable with taking that advice up. Anthony, that's brilliant. And there's so much help and advice in there that really is key to a lot yeah. of the things that concerns us. And, and as police officers, as you know, we, we absolutely um, feel probably nervous about yeah. reaching out and getting support in regards to our yeah. own personal finance, because we have to show that we are discharging a lawful debt through our regulations. So I think what you've said there will give some real assurances to people. You know, you don't have to shout it from the rooftops. You don't have you to don't. talk to uh, line managers immediately. You might want to just reach out and get some help and support. You might then choose not to even take that up. But you know what? Yeah. Forearm this forewarned, I think is the same, Absolutely. isn't it? So if you know that there are options out there, you can then reflect on it with your family and decide what's the best one for this you. This is it. Talk to other people, feel comfortable in it. And it's surprising how many people then do go on to speak to somebody else and they'll say, yeah. I'm in the same position or I got help and it really helped me. So you, you'll find that, that then that support mm. network opens up more and more so from doing that. And you like to say, once you've made that decision, you might then choose to um, follow that up today, tomorrow, next month, whenever it might be. But also you then might choose to speak to HR, to the Federation, whoever yeah. that might be as well. Yeah, no, excellent. That's brilliant. Thank you. Question number two. <laughs> My partner has lost the job um, and we've been relying on credit cards too much recently. Can you advise on a way forward? And you know what, Anthony, I think that's something that all of us absolutely can uh, relate to. I think we've all been there. Credit cards yeah. seem to be so enticing and, and so encouraging of you to take them out yeah. and then to even take out larger amounts from them. Uh, but one thing they are good at is 
chasing you up and sending you those daily letters through the post Absolutely. because of stress and anxiety when you can't pay them back. So what's your advice on that one? Yeah, that's a really good point there. Um, and you're right, this is something that has affected a lot of people and even more so right now because of the difficulties with COVID-19. We are, as an organisation, we are hearing from a lot of people that are in this exact situation and where people have lost a job or have been reliant upon credit of some type. And the first thing I would say is definitely seek help, get some advice around that, because it might be that you're relying on credit, but there might be other ways, better ways to tackle that situation. For example, if someone was to contact us, we could go through their full details, their financial details, we could understand what they're earning, what they've got as expenses, but we could understand what their ability then is to tackle the debt that they have. Do they need to be going through this dangerous debt cycle that might be taking place at the moment? Because credit card can be that. It can be um, quite consuming sometimes mm. and very easy, like you say, to get into that and for another credit card to be offered or for um, those um, uh, those amounts that can be borrowed to increase. So um, I, would, I would always urge someone to access that help. The other thing as well is with credit cards, it is very easy to... Um, get into the pattern of only pay minimum payments. Now, um, I would always say when things are more difficult and if there is a reduction in income, that might be something that people have to do. But when things are better, then use that opportunity because making minimum payments can be a very, um, again, another dangerous cycle to get into. Mm -hmm. Doing that can sometimes take people 20, 30 years to repay a credit card off at that rate. Um, and and that, you know, that's that's easy to forget when you're yeah. um you're working day to day. So think about that as well. Um, I would say as well, if somebody is struggling because of an income that has been lost, because of a job that's lost, um, that might be because of the current COVID situation there are other things that might you might be able to do. So if you don't want to go and get debt advice from somebody, speak to your lenders. Are there ways that they can put payments on hold if they are going into this borrowing cycle and having to repay every month? Um, for those that aren't aware, there have been quite a few um, opportunities and um, options brought in um, discussed by the Financial Conduct Authority that banks are now offering with regards to repayments on things like credit cards and loans, but also mortgages, um, where you might be able to access up to six months payment breaks on those payments in order to have some breathing space as such. Mm. Now that's an option that's available up until the end of March 30, so 31st of March next year. That's the date that that's been put in place um, at the moment. That might extend, it has already extended once since that's come in, so that might happen again. Um, if you are going to do that though, one thing I would always urge is to just weigh up the pros and cons because although you won't be making payments to those, um, those debts at the moment, if you do that, interest will still accrue. So the debt will still increase based on interest. It will just freeze your payments and free up that money for you for that temporary period. And the only other thing I would say is that some people become really, do, really quite scared and concerned about moving away from living on credit or having access to credit. It's mm -hmm. one of the things that we do hear a lot when people come to us for help. They'll say, I really do I have to give up all my forms of credit. I'm really worried about doing that. I like having it. Um, and I would always say to somebody, you know, if you can't afford the credit you've got, then do something about that. Um, don't be worried about moving away from credit and a, an existence on credit because the amount of people that say that they feel a, a huge sense of relief when they're away from credit and living within their means is quite huge. So, um, so do that. The other thing as well, if people do access help from us or they could do this themselves, make sure they're in, looking at maximizing their income as full as possible. Are they entitled to any other additional forms of income such as benefits? Um, we have a benefit check facility here at PayPlan. They can also access that on our website. Ways to boost income, that might be another way to help to just balance things for that period of time whilst there's difficulty. That's really helpful, uh, Anthony, because ultimately you think straight away to the people that, you know, are not managing to pay those credit cards every month and, uh, and getting more and more stressed about it and, and not being able to manage that income and outgoings 
going on because of all of yeah. that. It might be that it's not at that point yet. And it might be that, that exactly. like you're saying, these other areas of support and access to different funds might be out there and people it's don't so even know they're entitled to them. Absolutely right. And some people come to us for debt help. But what we're able to do on occasions is look at preventative measures so that debt help isn't yeah. needed, that debt solutions aren't needed, ways to make that balance again so that they don't need to take that further step. So like I say, reach out, get that help. It might be a way to prevent that from becoming the next step that you go down. That's brilliant. Thank you. Following on for that, we've got another question that's similar in regards to credit card issues. Yeah. So one member has asked us, I have quite high credit card debts, which they are managing every month and generally okay. keeping on the 0% interest, which yeah. is a good thing. However, uh, she's, uh, they're considering applying for a debt consolidation loan in order to just have one monthly payment, because I'm guessing they've got three or four different lots of different credit card debt paid yeah. off uh, month on month. She, uh, they're also due to remortgage next year and would like to know which would appear to be seen as the better light. So is it uh, to a prospective mortgage uh, yeah, lender? Is it just having that one debt? But it, I'm guessing it's a lot higher because it's consolidating all those little credit card debts. Or is it having the individual ones that are probably going to get paid off at different times, depending yeah. on how many years you've got to pay them off? Yeah. And there's what's really, again, really great is that people are thinking about this before it happens. So, yeah. um, so fantastic. I would always say, ultimately, uh, and this isn't going to be the, 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 you know, the single answer, but um, first and foremost, because we're talking about borrowing, and there's multiple considerations here, whether it be consolidation or looking at remortgaging, always seek independent financial advice before making any decision on that. Or, at, or, or and um, accessing help from an independent mortgage broker because it's a very difficult one to answer that because there's so many different considerations there. Mm. Different lenders will have different approaches. The mortgage market is moving continuously at the moment for obvious reasons with regards to yeah. COVID-19 um, and lenders' appetites and risk that they'll take on borrowing and lending um, is changing day by day so that's the the first thing that i would say seek the right advice um and also you know there's i guess the question i would ask back to that would be are you managing to to keep up that you know that juggling act of managing those singular debts and that multiple debts if that one payment would be better then that might be a factor for you because i think it's about the way that you manage mm. money as well one of the other questions i would ask though is if it is the case that there are three or four different debts that that person has, like the credit cards that's mentioned, and they are on 0%, my, my question mark on that would always be, how long can you continue doing that for? Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic thing that you're doing that. I, you know, I would always urge someone, look at doing a balance transfer to 0%, make sure you're paying that debt down so it's you're getting rid of that as soon as possible because effectively it's almost then becoming an upset loan if you can do yeah. that however if you've got multiple ones there is only a finite amount of lending that's available a finite amount of lenders there and at some point you might come to an, an end and exhaust those opportunities so i would always think about what will happen if that occurs as well because as you <laughs> said earlier that that preparation is key and you can be armed to make that decision mm. um the other thing I would say is if, and this is more about if you do choose to consolidate, if that's something that you do look at and take that up and go for consolidation, one of the things I would always say is ensure that you stay very, very, um, uh, you, you stay on track with your doing that and you actually cut up your credit cards because the huge risk is that you consolidate, you pay off all these credit cards, and you've got them fully there to use again. So mm -hmm. ensure that if you are doing that, that you stay strong and you either, if you, even if you don't cut them up, lock them away, put them somewhere, but make sure you're not accessing them because you could end up doubling that debt level very, very quickly if you're not careful. So have strength in that. Um, and also I think the, the key thing here is that um, the reason why I say to go and get financial advice and make sure you get that um, from a reputable source, make sure that you're considering your affordability, what's right for you, and thinking about what would happen if. 
So what would happen if I do this or what would happen if this happens? So just think about the down the line, because I think something that this year's taught all of us, we never quite know. So it's always better to think like that. Thank you. That's really helpful. And I think a lot of people are finding themselves in that situation at the moment, aren't they? They're yeah, all they juggling are. lots. And we all are. We're all juggling lots of different pots of different things uh, to try and make yeah. ends meet. So that's really helpful. Another question we've had is yep. with regards to those people that come to you for support and they may need uh, some really in-depth help. So we've yep. almost gone past the point of uh, being able to just manage what you pay off credit card wise, mortgage wise. We've almost got to that point where it's heading towards a crisis point where, you know, there's not enough coming in every month and those uh, those payments are not being paid every month. So it's it's almost like Robin Peters a pay Paul scenario and what you pay on a monthly basis and then also what you can keep in. When people get to that, then uh, we've often heard, and I know I've supported members in this, what's called the debt management plan. So yes. is there stuff you can tell us about those? Because yeah. I think about reassuring people that even, you know, even when it gets to that point, you know, there's still a lot that can be out there to support you and help you get the light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, and absolutely. a debt management plan is something that's always talked about, isn't it? So what could you tell us about that? Yeah, and um, you're right, there is there is concern out there about um, impact of, of solutions and how that will um, change somebody's lifestyle and, and approach mm. to, to their finances. Um, so debt management plans are one of many types of solution that's available to um, to individuals um, that are struggling with debt. Um, one of the things I will say to start with is that if somebody comes to an organisation like ourselves, we will understand what the client can afford to pay towards their debts, and then we'll explore a full range of solutions that are available to them. So it's a very holistic approach. It's looking at yeah. understanding the full range and pinpointing all of those that are available to that person uniquely. We'll also make a recommendation of which one's going to be more suitable for them based on their personal circumstances and provide them with the pros and the cons available. Now, if the debt management plan is one of those, um, what I can say about that is that that is an informal solution, but it's managed through an organization like ourselves. Now, through pay plan, we offer a completely free of charge debt management plan service. And the idea of that is if somebody has multiple debts that they're struggling with, and they, um, they're due to pay a certain amount per month contractually, we will actually go through their finances, we'll go through their income, we'll look at their expenditure, we'll make sure that they're um, earning everything that they can, we'll make sure that they're looking at their expenditure in the right way, and we'll understand what they can afford to pay comfortably towards those debts. Mm. One of the key things that I think links to the question you've asked there is people will often say to us, will you be taking over everything? Will I still have control over my finances or will that, you know, will that all be gone? Will I, will I be relinquishing that all to you? And the answer to that is no, we won't be taking over all of your everyday household expenses, for example. Mm. You will still have that control. What we will do is we will help you to understand what you can actually afford to pay to your debts. If it is a debt management plan, you'll make that one single payment to ourselves we will then distribute that money fairly amongst your creditors that you have. All of that money goes to those debts because it's a free service and will help you to repay those debts back, but at an affordable rate. You remain in control. So what we help you to really gain is clarity about what you can afford to pay to your debts. Mm -hmm. But we really recognize it's your money. You stay in control of that. We're just here to really help you make the most of what you're earning and help you to repay your debts back at an affordable rate but um, to make sure that that's done as quickly as you possibly can and part of that is because it's a free service. And you know what Anthony I've said to others before because I've certainly recommended members to you in the past um, what they've said to me is really helpful is the fact that doing that you then take on the responsibility of having that day-to-day -day contact with the debtors. Yeah. Now that can be really stressful. Very. The constant calls, the letters that come through the door yeah. that really, really impact, impact on uh, people's mental health, their well-being, and the stress and anxiety it yeah. brings to families. The fact that that gets removed and you deal with that yeah. 
it is such a blessing it really is and i think that really helps people get back their sense of control and their right. sense of not having to battle and get up every morning yeah. and think what call am i going to have to take today what what letter is going to drop through the letterbox and upset my partner it, you know yeah. all of that i think was key for me yeah so you know i'd always sing quite proudly around those debt management plans i think they're really good and um, i think that's it because it is going to be a solution that will handle multiple debts um yeah. as you just said quite often because of that that noise that is going on in the background with the debts, whether that is the letters, whether that's the calls. And sometimes that might not be happening. It's the sheer anticipation of that and yeah, concern yeah. about it. That just becomes very overwhelming and then starts to impact relationships, jobs, yeah. and day-to-day -day functioning. And as you say, can really impact on mental health. Um, and the fact that somebody can work with us, but we will then handle those debts and allow you to then focus on what's important to make sure that you're focusing on yourself, your family, your well-being, job. That is really, really key. Yeah. The other thing I will say about the debt management plan is that they are incredibly flexible. So if mm. something does change in the situation that you have, whether that might be a change in income, whether it's a change in expenditure, um, the plan can be reviewed at any point. So there is lots of flexibility in it to make sure that it accommodates those circumstance changes. And the other thing I'll say is that um, if somebody goes into a plan of that type with us, we also provide them with access to a service called Pay Plan Plus. And that's a free of charge service where somebody can monitor their debt solution online for free. And part of that is to ensure that somebody feels that they have that control, that they yeah. can see exactly how their plan is working, that their money is going to their debts and how much is going to their debts. But also it allows them to stay in contact with us, but also as well to review their plan that they're on. So it's, it does a lot in terms of that connection mm. and to make sure they're feeling part of that. Um, so we're here to make sure that balance stays right for them. They feel in control, but we're taking yeah. away that pressure. Yeah, that's excellent stuff. Um, I've got uh, another question for you here. Um, and I'll just read it directly. My yeah. wife and I are split now for three years, but still married. She now has an IVA for the next few years. Does that affect my credit rating? That's the first question. Yeah. Also, we have around 15K credit card debt. And it says we, so I'm guessing between the two of them when they were together. But, yeah. but the uh, member is struggling to get these paid off. Okay. And it says, I don't want an IVA unless I have to. Yeah. Are there any other options? I think that probably talks about what we've just been talking about, does doesn't a little it? Bit. Yeah, absolutely. A does. bit of an explanation about an IVA, I think, would be helpful as yeah. well. Yeah, okay, no, no problem. So I guess the the first thing to go through those those questions individually in terms of does somebody else accessing a, an IVA if they're you know if they're married to that individual does that impact them? Absolutely not. So the fact that that person goes into a solution isn't what impacts them, essentially. The one thing I would add to that, though, is unless in her IVA, in that solution that she's in, that includes joint debts. Mm -hmm. If there were joint debts in there, then the fact that that solution is helping that person to reduce their payments to a manageable level would also have an impact on that other person that has that joint debt. Yeah. Because they're jointly and severally liable for that debt, which means that they're both equally responsible for that debt repayment in full until it's gone, um, then they're, they're both going to be impacted mm -hmm. if that's the case. If there are no joint debts, then absolutely no impact at all. So that's the first thing. The second point here is around the uh, £15,000 credit card debt. Now, it's very unusual to have a joint credit card there will normally always be singular credit cards and you might have a second card user mm -hmm. a second card holder on it so that would be the very norm it's very unusual to see anything different to that now um if that's the case so we'll assume that that is the situation um and i'm i would guess that it is because if it was truly a joint debt then that would also be in the iva that the partner is in yeah so we're assuming that this is probably a singular credit card mm. um sole credit card but probably with the second card user which means that that other person can just use it but the 
um, the person who took out the card initially is the one that's responsible Still for responsible. payments. Yeah. Um, then absolutely seek debt help. That's the first thing. Um, now, in terms of solutions and, for example, IVAs, um, I'll talk about what an IVA is to finish off with. But first and foremost, nobody needs to feel that they have to go into a solution that they don't want to go into. This is all about you making the choices that are right for you. And it's really important that you do choose a solution that you're comfortable with mm -hmm. and you fully understand how that will benefit you or otherwise. Um, now, when we go through our advice, we will, as I said earlier, we'll make sure that you're fully aware of all of the solutions that are available to you. From a regulatory point of view, we're actually obliged to do that. We need to make sure that you're fully advised on all your solutions, including, if applicable, an IVA. Um, and it might be that that is the one that we recommend. It might not be, but we need to recommend the one that's better for you based on your circumstances. The most important part, though, is it's totally up to you whether you take that advice or not. You may mm. decide to take a debt management plan as an alternative. You may decide to do something else, and that's absolutely fine. As long as you're fully aware of how that works and how that will work differently to the other solutions and the benefits that brings and, and, um, and how that works um, and will impact you, then that is what matters. It's about mm. choice and your, the, the solution you're comfortable with. Now, in terms of what an IVA is, um, an IVA stands for an individual voluntary arrangement, and that is a form of debt solution that would allow you to make a comfortable, affordable payment to an organisation that offers that solution, that could be to ourselves, and when you're in that solution, that will help you to repay back that amount over a fixed period of time, and that would normally be five or six years, and at the end of that period, any debt that hasn't been repaid would be written off. So the banks agree to that once that's in place. The other thing that that does is it guarantees once in place that creditors won't contact you. It prevents them from taking any debt recovery action, including legal action. And it also prevents interest and charges being added onto the debt. So it it's, gives you that certainty around the, the solutions. Mm -hmm. It is a form of, of insolvency, hence why it has that form of debt write off as well. The one thing I would say that's really key is to make sure that they, if they do come and get advice, to listen to what that solution still is, because there is a lot of info, they might have looked online and understood what that solution is from information mm. they've read. There's a lot of inaccurate information out there about all solutions, to be fair. Get the right help, come to a professional, understand what it is, and then make your decision from there, I would say. A lot of people I know, mm. including police officers, are worried about whether that type of solution will impact their job. Some police officers are worried about whether a debt management plan will affect their job. I will give a little bit of um, reassurance around that. Again, going back to the roots of our organisation, we were set up initially to work with the police federations across the country to offer solutions like individual voluntary arrangements as a way to deal with the debt that's been um that's been uh, there that's been struggling with they're struggling yeah. with but to protect their job so um i think the most important thing that any employer wants to see from someone is that they're trying to deal with the debt that's the most yeah. important thing yeah absolutely no fully agree with that one thank you for that that's quite an in-depth one really isn't it so it is. really so there's quite a few questions that. for that yeah quite a few um are we, quite, the next question we've had is quite a simple one, uh, probably refers to what we've said before, but it says again, somebody's lost their job and can't afford yeah. to pay their mortgage. Is okay. there any help available? And I think that's there's a there's a clear distinction, isn't that we're talking about yeah. credit cards, but now we're talking about a mortgage. So somebody Absolutely. who's going to lose their home. Yeah. What could you advise with that? And you're right. And this links into some of the things that we've been saying already, doesn't it, regarding how COVID has really seen an increase in people that are struggling with their mortgages. Um, I guess, again, there's there's lots of things that I could say here, but one of the things that I, I think that we do help individuals with when they approach us is to understand um, almost which which payments that they're making, uh, which are more important than others. Mm. Quite often when people approach us, they might be fully up to date with their credit cards and their loan debts, but they're maybe behind with things like their mortgages or rent and other things. And that would be, rent and mortgage would always be a priority debt, a priority payment as far as we're concerned. And what we would want to make sure is that we're talking to the individual to make sure they're 
um, they're they're actually dealing with them appropriately. So um, not not falling behind on that in order to keep up things like credit cards, because typically um, the on, non priority debts are the, the the creditors that will will kind of shout the loudest. So they'll they'll make the most noise, um, which is sometimes why people get go down that route. So that's the first thing I'd say. I'd say also talk to the lenders, you know, talk to your, talk to the bank, talk to your mortgage lender, because right now there's probably more help available than there ever has been. Yeah. Um, we've talked about different as assistance that's out there. Um, for example, potential payment breaks, payment holidays on things like credit cards, but also mortgages that we're talking about here. And at the moment, somebody can access that potentially for six months. And that won't, if it's COVID related, if it's a COVID related payment break, that won't affect your credit score. If it's a non COVID related credit break, uh, payment break, then that potentially will. So fully understand how that will impact you if you do choose to press pause on payments. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is though that you take action. If it does impact you, know how it will impact you, but it might be still essential that you do that in order to keep things balanced at the moment so fully understand and then take action I'd say yeah there might also be additional help out there available depending on the situation that somebody is in um, and their type of income that they have so the there is forms of help out there such as support for mortgage interest um, which is a way that um, the government will help towards interest payments on your mortgage if you're on different types of benefits um, now that is essentially a loan that would be repaid upon uh, the house being sold or if the, the ownership of the property was transferred. So it's a form of help that's there. But again, you'd need to make sure that you're seeking advice around that. And you mm -hmm. can get that from gov.uk. And then the other thing as well is um, getting advice, as I say, around your finances, go through your income and expenditure to make sure that you are boosting your income as much as you can. If you're a homeowner, now, this won't be suitable for everybody, but there are things out there that you can do, such as the rent a room scheme. If you are, if you've got multiple prop, uh, multiple uh, bedrooms and you want to rent one of those out, you can do that. If you're a homeowner, you can do that and earn up to seven and a half thousand pounds tax free. And up to that level, you don't have to do a tax return up to that le that level either of income. That's quite a substantial amount. That's over four hundred pounds a month just from doing that, um, that could help you to, to balance the book again. So look at ways to boost your income and then also look at ways to minimize your outgoings as well. We have probably all been guilty of um, signing up to different subscriptions since mm -hmm. lockdown, Netflix, you name it, Amazon. I am in that gang as well. I've been doing that. <laughs> but how long have we not been using it? That's the thing. Is there anything you can cut back and help to, to regain that control again? Yeah, no, really helpful. And I think that last generalistic advice is helpful for everybody. I think we've all signed up for things. Yeah, have we? Yeah. We've even forgotten about, to be honest, and yeah. probably not even check whether they're continued on. That's always a key one, isn't it? Yeah. Now, the next question um, uh, focuses, if you like, on what happens when a police officer comes to the end of their career and they're coming towards retirement. Okay. Uh, and the question... Uh, discusses that um, what can happen is you then have quite a significant drop in income when you've retired. Now, I, I wouldn't expect you to go into the in-depth detail around police officers' pension schemes because they are varied and they yeah. are so unique to each individual. That's not the question I think is being asked here. I think what the concern is drawing out is how can an individual feel confident that they're not going to fall into debt because their yeah. income rapidly does minimise down so that their options yeah. then become either taking on a part time job to try and boost up that uh, pensionable pay that comes in every month using equity from a house has been mentioned in here uh, to try and uh, boost their incoming or using if they've opted for like a commutation lump sum using that as a monthly ongoing income um, yeah. which we can see the flaws in all of those as a model sure, if sure, I'm honest, yeah. other than they're getting the part-time job but what they're asking is what kind of things can they do to stop themselves falling into that cycle and falling into okay. that debt so that preventative measure almost again yeah. yeah yeah and I think there's no quick or easy way to tackle that question because I think that again this could be um, something depending on the situation we, we don't know how 
far ahead the retirement is, for example, that this person's yeah. um, discussing. But I guess the big thing there for anybody in any situation is planning, making sure they're planning ahead. Um, I, I, you know, myself, you know, at a young age, I, it wasn't something I used to think about. Wouldn't worry about that. We all think, mm -hmm. you know, at a young age, we're going to live forever. Um, mm -hmm. It's years away. We don't need to worry about that. And you know, it, as we all probably experience, it comes along quicker than we think. So um, always, I think, um, plan to the future. Think about what you might want and versus what you might need. Those are very two very different things. Um, so that would be my first thing. Um, ultimately, do seek independent advice, financial advice from someone. Go to a planner, financial planner, pension planner. Seek that advice would be a key thing because that is a regulated activity. You need to go yeah. to the right place to get that. Um, but I think practically, things that I would recommend to do is, it sounds really simple, but get back to basics, get back to pen and paper, or for those that like a spreadsheet, and actually put together your financial planner if you like your budget now most people that approach us for debt help when they do that we'll go through that with them we'll go through their income we'll go through all of their expenses but most people have never done that before until mm. they reach out to us for help and I think that is part of this because the more you can feel confident about your household affairs the more you can plan ahead for the future because there will be things that you might look at and think I can cut that back or I can make decisions because I'm happy to forego that in order mm -hmm. to plan for my future um, and that might be things like cutting back those subscriptions or um, uh, looking at um, ways to minimize um, one expense or maximize an income but the things I think you don't know that until you really get back to those basics and put that pen to paper and look yeah. at that the other thing yeah. that really helps you to do is to um, understand all of those expenses that you've you don't think about on a monthly basis things that mm. might not come out on a monthly basis things that you might do six weekly you know for some people that might be a haircut um, for other people it might be um, a daily payment that they might spend going and getting coffee and actually, when you add those things up, it might shock you to know how much you're spending on those things and how that could have such a positive impact to the amount you could put away for retirement if you were to change those kind of lifestyle choices, for example. Yeah. So yeah. I think those are things no. that you can get to, get to grips with. Anthony, that's really helpful. And the only advice I would put in there from our end is, do you know what? Get in touch with your local federation branch. Uh, every one of the branches I know do what we call resettlement courses. Yep. So they have different independent pension advice uh, people Fantastic. that can, you know, help to give you some advice on what you might plan to do with your commutation Absolutely. part and, and how to resettle. And what right. they also do in a lot of areas is look at uh, redevelopment of your skills because, do you know what, members yeah. of the police have not had to look at a CV probably for 30 years. Yep. Um, so you can imagine those skills of writing a CV for a new career or a new part-time job it's, can it seem quite alien, daunting. Doesn't it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, and so that's great. It's a practical. Oh yeah, and not recognising the skills and the abilities that you've got in an abundance, but how you can promote those to a new employer can be quite yeah. difficult. So yeah, definitely get in touch with your local branch to that support you not only with that personal advice, but advice yeah. for resettlement as well um, and I guess um to add to that if I guess there's two other um types of people there you might have somebody that wants to get some um outside advice and you might have somebody that looking at this today that isn't with the police and wants to know what they should do yeah. as well um what I would recommend to do is access free advice so the money and pension service have two um two access routes one is called pension wise that you can access through for example citizens advice free yeah. of charge information um, from them or the pension advisory service which gives free information advice as well so both run and funded through the money and pension service independent confidential advice that's another route for you oh Anthony, that's brilliant that's really excellent to know that for those people that may not want to go to the uh, the branches as well so that's really helpful do you know what? You've given us so much uh, knowledge and information just in that 30, 40 minutes. Time it's whizzes by. <laughs> it really has. It has whizzed by, hasn't it? Do you know yeah. what? If I was to ask you, what would be your top 
key point that you would yeah. want people that have listened to us over the last 30 minutes to take away with you what would it yeah. be my top thing would be as we are fully aware that people might be sat there thinking i'm really worried and scared about picking up the phone but i would beyond anything i would say don't do nothing take some action even if it's just a baby step, little bits at a time, do something and you'll be surprised how better you feel because the amount of people that feel that stress is relieved, that sharing that with somebody else really, really does help them. Um, it's, it's incredible what a difference that can make. So do something, even if that's just looking online, picking up the phone, talking to us on live chat, just do something. Anthony, thank you so much. And for the benefit okay. of everybody on this, even if you haven't managed to tune into this today this is going to be recorded it's going to go out on both of our websites it's going to yeah. go out through social media there's going to be links to it on the, at least the police federation website and i think through to yourself as well right. uh, and, and again any of our members if you're looking for support and around all things finance we you know we're trying to promote this throughout the whole month so please Look at what is out there, link into all the different materials that we've got and reach out and get some help. And I think that comes from both of us. Absolutely. So right. It just leaves for me to say thank you again to Anthony. I really Pleasure. appreciate thank you. your time. And thank you to everybody that's listened in. Take care, everybody. Take care, everyone. Thank you.